Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. I got some uh, interesting news here, and uh, there is uh, some opinion polls on uh, the Ukrainians joining NATO or European Union. Interesting uh, um, uh, results, and I will have some uh, advice for my uh, fellow Ukrainians. Um, this article comes from Ukrainska Pravda from today, July 1st, 2022. 90% of Ukrainians want to join the EU. 73% want to join NATO. That's a survey. It says the overwhelming majority of Ukrainians want Ukraine to become a member of the European Union and NATO. This survey was conducted by Kiev by National Demographic Institute published on the Kiev International Institute of Sociology website. Ooh, in sociology. And uh, this is the quote from sociologists. Uh, Ukrainians are also united in their desire and expectation to join in, to join the European Union and NATO. 90% of respondents at the national level want Ukraine to become a member of the European Union with the lowest rate in the East and south or at 84 uh, percent detail details the majority of course of respondents 73 percent support the move to join nato in the south and east of ukraine these percentages sit at 65 percent and 59 respectively the survey shows that men want to expect ukraine to become a NATO member state more than women, and younger respondents want to join NATO and expect European Union membership uh, more so than older respondents. Let me just uh, uh, analyze this with uh, the majority and minority. So uh, the ones in south in the east of Ukraine that have lower percentages, uh, there is probably because uh, there's either an older population, I would say, or um, because that's a majority of Russian population or there's more Russians living over there. That's one, could be a few reasons. Now, I, uh, I have to confess that uh, I am familiar with sociology uh, because of my, uh, some of my education. And I know how opinion polls and surveys are manufactured in a way that they're put together. And then uh, I know how they are discussed. I know how, uh, and it's not only from direct experience, it's also through uh, knowledge accumulated by reading, not only being involved in this kind of uh, things. And um, I don't wanna say I'm an expert on that, I won't put myself at the level of an expert, but I don't have, you don't have to be an expert to understand the sociological survey and understand that the questions are uh, leading and misleading uh, and the persons who do that and uh, the frequency, how you put the questions one after another, you know, the sequence of the questions. There's many, many tricks. There are surveys for this, uh, uh, you know, the surveys are done with um, a goal in mind. They're not really done to, let's find out what they say, because they publish these surveys. Sometimes they are like that, you know, let's do it and see what the hell these guys want, whatever, what's the preference of the population. But some of them, they come, they are sponsored, or they are, there are interests behind, not only sponsored, ordered by uh, certain institutions like, I don't know, let's say I'm a, I want to know this, I want to know that, and political parties, uh, you know, have polls of opinion and surveys all the time. And especially when uh, there are some polls that are, you know, like, I want to know if I'm doing a good job so I know what to change. And I want to know, make this poll so I look good so that I can publish it or I can mislead the, you know, the, the masses in a certain way. Yes, that's the way sometimes it works. Because the um, human being is a, uh, you know, an, an animal, a herd animal, likes to belong you know, in, a, in, a, in a team. 
And uh, mo most of us, or all of us, like to be in the winning team, not in the losing team. So if you tell us that, uh, that's why politicians and these uh, surveys are always, opinion polls are published before an election, like extensively, it's not only to inform them, but to, to make those people who have no, no understanding of what's going on, but they have the um, the instinctual uh, drive to belong to the winning team. There are people that you attract like that. And if they're, you're in between, you don't want to be in the losing team because you're, uh, I was about to say coward, but uh, um, it's too strong word. I'm afraid to face the majority. Not a lot of people have the courage to stay in front of a, a majority of people and disagree with them and make his or her point. Therefore, you want to be on the other team that, you know, is the winning team because you're afraid. You're not courageous to be one against 50 or three against 100. Uh, so, therefore, some people don't even want to know about certain things. So, this is why uh, I know how these things are made and I know the interest in the, the manufacturing of the results and the questions. That's very important how you ask the question. And uh, it's obviously, right? It's obvious. It's not some... And we have here, it says that um, younger people are more inclined to go to uh, big, you know, to join NATO and uh, European Union. And this is because of the fast media and entertainment uh, uh, industries that pushed certain uh, models of life into them. And also because um, I'm giving you some examples, it's not that these are the only, the only ones, but I think they're more, uh, the, the other most obvious. On the other hand, the young generation, um, Obviously, when you're young, you don't know much and you have time during your lifetime, right, to accumulate if you put effort. If you don't put effort, you're going to be the same person. You didn't understand anything. You didn't look around. You didn't analyze situations and you didn't, didn't memorize experiences or knowledge and, you know, figured out what's going on. So you can be old and still be stupid, uh, nevertheless. Or you can be young and know a lot, but... Sometimes time, you need time for that knowledge to really connect. And then you have women and men. Uh, this is a, a surprise. Uh, I was surprised, for instance, that men uh, would like to become, you know, expect Ukraine to become a NATO state more than women. I would expect that women would like to become more of a NATO or a European Union, liking to belong to um, to the you know, the fashion, the better life, and so on. And I'm telling you, it's not because I say so, but because there are studies, especially in advertising, that are actually bombarding women much, much more than men. Because, I'm going to say something very unpopular, but real, based on science, scientific research, women are, in general, more impressionable. And that's why the commercial are... Uh, focus more on them because they will buy things and then that would affect the men too. Um, it's, it's just, uh, that's the way it is. So I'm surprised with that result here. It says the sociologist involved in the survey stated that in December 2021, 58% of the Ukrainians wanted Ukraine to become a European Union member state and 48 wanted Ukraine to become a member of NATO. It's obvious why now things change because of the uh, Hermann Goering's uh, statements. If you want a country united, point out to an external threat and the country will unite behind you and you can do whatever you want with them. Now that threat is real here, uh, and, but all that threat could, I would say, um, diminish a little bit if uh, a better understanding of, understanding of the situation would be taught. Now, you can't teach someone to accept that portions of your country, that you perceive as your country or territory, would be taken by someone else. That's that you can't, you know, like uh, imagine now, let's say, uh, United States, so would say, okay, now uh, Mexico will take, uh, I don't know, three states from the southwest. 
And you say, well, okay, that's fine. I mean, I guess they're, uh, I think the um, Mexican majority, um, Mexican population is kind of a majority, let's say. We get to that point, right? If they're not there yet, I don't know. I think we are to, to some extent close to it in some areas overwhelmingly. So then I think they, they deserve that. But if you go by that, I don't think you're going to find many. And if you find many of like those saying that, and if you put the context of Ukraine, then they will not, they will not say, well, I guess there's more Russians in the East Ukraine. So yeah, I guess it's okay. You're going to see because of courage that they will not be on the same page. And you find liberals, the liberals who are against Ukraine, uh, you know, uh, giving land to the Russians, even though it's a majority of Russians over there, they're opposed to that. But they would be pro United States, maybe giving back Mexico some territories because their majority, uh, majority population is Mexican. Now, regarding giving back, I did that because uh, if you remember how Mexico was created in the same way United States was created by grabbing lands from other populations. So, you know, they committed, let's say, the same, um, they follow the same rules, you know, I'm stronger, I take it. So that's why uh, Mexico is not um, this, how should I put it? Um, uh, I like Mexico, I like Obrador, the president, but the thing is, they did not form the country because they got together and said, okay, guys, let's make a country. I love you. We all love. Let's put together. No, it was the Spaniards, the Spanish no? came over there and they killed whomever and they took whatever. And then they formed countries like that. No, that's how the South America was created, the countries and so on. It was not like they all got together and they decided, well, peacefully we got here, peacefully we, no. So it's the same thing as United States. I'm strong and I'm going to take it. And that's been the rule in history, including with the Indian tribes here. The stronger Indian tribe here killed the weaker Indian tribe and he got its land and women and made them slaves. Yeah, they have slaves. So when they say, oh, United States took our land, I'm pretty sure you took the land of other Indians before Americans because uh, you are still Americans, uh, settlers, some European uh, settlers, you know, because uh, it's just human nature. It's not you're outside of the spectrum of the human nature of dominance and desire and, uh, you know, injustice. Human nature is like that. I'm stronger. I don't care about laws. I'm just going to take it. Now, if there are laws and society keeps uh, a balance, then you have a civilized society. But other than that, you have human beings. And we are still what we were 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 years ago, the same. We just learned to uh, follow certain rules and accept those rules to a certain extent. That's why criminality is still there. Those are still us. It's just that we are trained and accept to be trained to be civilized. We accept this way of life. I don't want to drive 70 miles per hour on the highway. I would like to drive until I'm scared of the speed I'm driving. That, that's how I would drive. So let's say I'm afraid to go 200 miles per hour. That's how much I would drive. Let's say if I'm afraid to drive when I get to 180, then that's how fast I would like to drive to the limit of being afraid. And we have different limits. But I do this because I live in a society and I have some scaredy cats that probably decided for me that 70 miles per hour is enough. And it's not that dangerous. I wonder if it's 69 or 71 is the difference so big in between those. Why was 70? Why 65? So certain things are just thrown over there and say, okay, 70 is good enough. Nevertheless, thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart. Advice for the Ukrainians. Ukrainians. I come from Romania. I know, I know how the older generations not the ones, uh, uh, old, I'm talking about older generations that maybe had a chance to live under Soviet Union and in the period between Soviet Union and what the hell is now here. And I know how tolerant the society is regarding certain values. Well, you, those values that you have as a culture, as a, uh, as a nation, they don't always match with the Brussels culture 
or NATO culture. So you will have to change those. You have to accept certain things that you would definitely not accept. And I'm talking about uh, uh, social uh, cultural uh, trends and not trends, explicit uh, requests in order to uh, receive, for instance, funds from Brussels, from the international banking systems. And you have to do that. And you don't like that. So remember, when you get under the umbrella of an organization, you lose some of your sovereignty. And they get, those guys will blackmail you like they blackmail now Poland regarding some uh, <clears throat> uh, rights that they infringe, uh, Hungary. Remember, remember that. Th this is my advice. And Romanians wanted the same way. And the Romanians are the same. But the leaders are following the, you know, what their bosses are telling them. Not the population. The population, if you do a survey about certain values from uh, uh, Brussels, you will find a, a big discrepancy between what they say and what they really believe in. So, uh, how is that? Uh, be careful of uh, what you wish for. Uh, thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.